Okay, we'll call the City Council regular meeting to order for Monday, December 5th, 2005, and we'll begin with uh, a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pastor Tom, would you want to lead us in prayer? Yes, sir. Hold your hands, bow your heads, and pray with me. Holy and gracious God, your generous goodness comes to us anew every day. Help us to be mindful and thankful of the many blessings that you shower upon us as we live in this land, this state, and this fine city. Lord, we're also mindful of those that are still struggling with the storm-related issues from last week. We especially pray for those workers who are out there on the line, working to restore power, working to restore hope. Lord God, in this season of goodwill, help us to reach out to one another, to encourage and support one another, as we look forward to once again celebrating the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. We also pray a blessing upon the Mayor, the City Council, and our elected and appointed leaders. We pray that you bless them in the good work that they do. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tom. Next we'll have roll call. Armagast. Here. Garnos. Here. Gisselbeck. Here. Heller. Here. Johnson. Here. Meisenheimer. Here. Solberg. Here. Walder. Here. Wilson. Here. And York. Here. Thank you. Item number one on the agenda is the motion to approve the minutes of the City Council meeting held November 21st, 2005. May I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Mr. Solberg. Is second. there a second? By Mr. Wilson. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next is item number two, which is the alcoholic beverage license renewals for 2006. I'd like to call your attention to the handouts. Under the package off sale liquor, item seven, which is Interstate Liquors, LMR Incorporated, uh, has requested that, uh, they, that they will not be renewing their license and, and so it's been withdrawn by the applicant. All the others are as they are shown on the sheet. So we'll begin the public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to those licenses? If not, we'll close the public hearing. Next, we'll begin with council action. May I have a motion to approve all of those except for the one that was withdrawn today? So moved. So moved by Mr. Meisenheimer. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Walder. Any further discussion on those license applications? Uh, did I see the chief here? Is there any problem from the police department at all, chief? No, Okay. If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. On a separate item, we have the renewal for Sunday liquor licenses. And again, on your handout, uh, there was one withdrawal, and that was for number 13, the Sunnyside Inn. All the others that you see on your sheet have requested Sunday liquor sales. May I have a motion then to approve those? So moved. So moved by Mr. Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Wilson. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number three is ordinance number 5-14, the rezoning of lots 20 through 26, Putters Green. Uh, Rick, you'll address that. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. You recall on November 7th, we had a first reading of ordinance 05-14, uh, which was developed in response to a September 27, 2005 petition submitted to the city of Watertown uh, by Dale Christensen in, um, in uh, representing ET Partnership Incorporated. This is uh, this evening, um, we need to have the second reading that we intend to uh, change the, the zoning in the uh, area requested from uh, R1 to R2. This was uh, considered by the Planning Commission on November 9th. Um, and again, you heard it for the first time on November 7th. There is a representative here uh, Mr. Christensen is here to represent this issue. Um, just to give an idea where Putters Green is located, 
uh, is just west of the airport. Uh, 33rd Street West would be on the border of, uh, would be on the east side of this. It's just one line of lots along the new uh, portions of our municipal golf course. 14th Avenue North would bound it on the north. Unplatted portions of the property are, are bounded on, salt, uh, on Golf Course Road. So uh, this is not for the entire uh, platted properties. It's only for uh, items, or I'm sorry, lots 20 through 26. Notice that this is also a public hearing, uh, which we have uh, notified adjacent landowners of this. And we've also, uh, which there are none, it's all the city of Watertown, in all honesty. And we've also published it in the Watertown Public Opinion. So with that, if there's any other questions or comments, myself or Mr. Christensen is here. Okay, we'll begin with the public hearing for the rezoning of lots 20 through 26 on Putters Green, which is number 5-14. Is there anyone here to speak to the issue? If not, we'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. So moved. So moved by Mr. Garnos. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Solberg. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Rick. Item number four is the 2005 budget amendments. Tracy. Thank you, Mayor. And under this item, there are actually two separate actions that the council will be asked to take. The first is a contingency account transfer for the purchase of a, a truck for the fire department. Uh, some of you, uh, I'm sure, are aware that there was a, a grassland fire south of town here a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was the night before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving night, I don't remember exactly which night it was, but at any rate, the uh, fire department had some problems with one of the, uh, the older vehicles that they have. It, it was uh, actually, I believe, an Army surplus vehicle that's been in this, with the city for quite a number of years. The uh, transmission failed on the vehicle. They were able to locate uh, a replacement vehicle at the Federal Surplus Property uh, Bureau in Huron. Uh, I believe the mayor contacted uh, at least a couple of the council members, I think, that are on the finance committee, and uh, the consensus was to go ahead and, and uh, purchase a new vehicle rather than repair the, the very old uh, uh, Army surplus vehicle that the, the fire department has been using for quite a number of years. Uh, the, the purchase price, I believe, was just under $20,000 for the replacement vehicle. The, uh, the request is to uh, fund that purchase with a contingency account transfer to the fire department in the amount of twenty thousand dollars and i believe uh, uh, assistant of, chief smith is here if you do have any other questions so. just a point of clarification that was a, a newer truck rather than a new truck that's correct it was a 2003 with twelve thousand miles if we could have a motion for that contingency fund transfer I'll make a motion for the transfer. Okay. Uh, Mrs. York uh, made the motion, seconded by Mr. Garnos. Are there any further questions? Well, I, have, I have just maybe a couple questions and a comment or so, but <clears throat> I guess my question is why I don't have a problem with, I mean, we need to have the, the, the equipment that works out there, but how do we end up in a situation where we have such an old truck um, that, you know, we go from, from a really old truck to a new truck just like that without any budgeting process. And, and it seems to me that we need to make sure that our, our equipment is, is uh, being budgeted properly as we go through the replacement. I know emergencies every once in a while come up, but this one seems convenient at the end of the year. <laughs> I, I don't think there's anything convenient about it. A transmission goes out, a transmission goes out. That's just what That's, happens. Yeah, and but a transmission doesn't cost $20,000 to repair. No, but it would have been kind of like throwing good money after bad to repair that old a truck. And Mayor Fox was in a position the next day where we could have taken a chance on no more grass fires until there was a council meeting or till he could find some other people. It was the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, many were gone, many were out of town. And I happen to be one of those that he talked to, and so I take some of the responsibility for that purchase that day. What was available down at the surplus center was a older truck that had uh, 50,000 plus miles on it, not in good of shape, uh, for about $10,000, I believe is what Mike told me. And so do we spend, 
in, in the meantime, what we were using was a uh, dump truck from the street department with a plastic big container that uh, was going to be our interim tr uh, transport for grass fires. Um, it just made sense that as long as we were down there, uh, that we had to do something. And of course, do we spend 10 grand to buy something that's old and has a lot of miles on it? Or do we spend a little bit more and get something that's going to suit us for the years to come? Now, I certainly agree that we need to do better, excuse me, better budgeting and for these types of items. But um, it was an unfortunate incident that happened. And with our responsibilities within the county to respond to grass fires, this newer uh, vehicle, this 2003, has an extended cab. The old one that we had didn't. It, ha it required a driver. It was a shift. It wouldn't go over 40 miles an hour is what was told to me. It also required that you take all the hoses and everything and put it along beside the driver in the front seat so you couldn't take anybody else. This newer vehicle is extended cab. It has room for the driver plus three other people to ride in the same cab. It also has uh, room for a... Uh, a uh, compartment that can be placed right behind the cab to handle all the hoses and other supplies that are needed and then behind that would be the big tanker and so um, it was something that would really suit our needs well into the next 15 years or more and so I guess this is what we did so as a as a member of the Finance Committee and one of the persons that the mayor called I, I supported the move I, I was concerned why the why there was such a rush other than the fact to have that equipment available uh, immediately. If there's a different answer, I would like to know it. And, and I don't have a problem with what was done, and, and I think you guys made the correct decision. It's just I don't want to see any of our departments in a position where we're driving that kind of a truck. If we're responding, if we're responsible to respond to emergencies, I want our people responding in good equipment. Yeah, but Brad, uh, <coughs> I think this is one of those trucks that's been put off of the priority list for an awful long time. And that maybe we shouldn't do that again, I guess, all I'm saying. It's probably been the department's decision to put, the, put our money into our upfront trucks, the trucks that we use for big, big fires, big emergencies, and this truck has always sufficed. And, and it's not to say that you know a transmission could go out of a out of a new vehicle too, but this one just happened to be the transmission went out and it already had some other problems, so it didn't seem very prudent to put more money into it. And in, unless I miss my guess, uh, it wasn't the fire department's decision to pu put it on low priority. It was probably the council's decision. That's right. Well, in in all the years I've been on the council, we've never had a discussion even about the truck is this older. truck. Yeah truck is older than you are great well <laughs> then it should have been gone a long time ago there you go <laughs> I guess uh, what uh, chief Youngman told me was that it quit counting miles after a hundred thousand and he figures it probably had another hundred thousand on it too so and again you know it was one of those things that in, you know we're going to be using quite a bit now responding out in the country and um, um, I certainly have no regrets that we did do it. I, I, I would agree with uh, Alderman Johnson that perhaps, you know, it should have been handled years ago before we got to this point, but this is what we were dealt with at the time, and that's what we did. So is there any further discussion then on the tra uh, transfer? The only thing, I, having dealt with that here in agency so that Brad kind of understands another part of it, those things are not there forever. It's on a first-come, first-served basis, so the truck may have been there today and may be picked up by Hermosa tomorrow. So if the opportunity presented itself, I would be one of the first to say, you know, for that price, and it's usually about half or less than what it would cost you if you bought it place someplace else. So I don't have a problem with that. I understand where you're coming from, but I think it's it's a fine deal. Any other discussion? May I have a, let's see, we did have a motion in a second. Uh, okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next Thank is you. item the, number B, Tracy. Thank you, yes. The uh, Item B is the second reading of ordinance number 05-15, which will provide a supplemental appropriation uh, to a number of city departments uh, in the general fund, park and rec fund, the uh, BBB, sales tax fund, community rec center fund, the capital improvement fund, Sioux River watershed project, and tax increment district number two. Now we did uh, spend some time at our last meeting uh, touching on some of the highlights 
within here if you have any other questions now that you've had uh, uh, additional time to review the ordinance I'd certainly try to answer those otherwise it wasn't my intention to go through this in any detail tonight unless you would like me to well if we could have a motion first to approve so moved. so moved by Mr. Heller is there a second, I'll second that. seconded by Mrs. Arbogast is there any further discussion If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number five is the Plat of the Rogatsky edition, resolution number 5-61. Rick? Thank you, Mayor Fox. This petition for uh, Plat approval comes to you from your petitioners, Kathleen Kolb, Patricia Houston, and uh, r and Farms. Rogatsky edition, and, and I have it available if, if no one knows or had a difficult time determining its location based on the info, uh, information in the pack. I can certainly bring it up in our GIS if that's going to be helpful for the discussion. I will tell you that it is a, a piece of property, 35 acres minimum as required by Coynton County. It's located in Coynton County, but within our platting jurisdiction. Therefore, the dual action uh, is required both by the city and the county. This was before our city plan commission on um, November 17th. It was followed by the county's planning and zoning commission on the 21st of November and followed up with the um, Connington County Commission approval on November 22nd. Note that there won't be any, um, in, in accordance with our comprehensive land use plan, uh, which, which calls for no additional residential development on properties less than uh, 35 acres. So this is consistent with, again, remaining consistent with the county's policy and ordinance requirements for 35 acres. And I mention that because some of the concern from a planning standpoint goes away as long as we know that this is not a dense residential development. It is adjacent to Third Avenue North, however, which is a minor collector on the city's uh, major street plan, which is identified in our um, comprehensive land use plan. Note that there, uh, there has not been a, a basin, a drainage master plan, and sanitary sewer. All those planning issues uh, are difficult to address. And however, because it is a low, res low density residential in the county, uh, some of those concerns do go away. We have talked about that with the applicant, and there's a representative of the applicant here. I, I misspoke uh, just slightly there. We talked with representatives of the applicant. Uh, the applicant was not in town when we spoke, uh, but his representatives uh, have been. And in addressing the planning issues, one of the idea, the, recommend, the recommended idea that we come up with was that uh, we approve of this plat so long as the county approves the exact same plat with the same conditions. And the condition that we come up with, and there's only one, is that we're uh, going to enter into an agreement with the applicants um, agreeing to petition to the city for annexation when any portion of that property is, becomes adjacent by virtue of the city growing out to it. And at that time, we'll deal with those planning and development issues. Um, so with that, uh, there is a representative that can speak uh, on behalf of the owner if, uh, if, if they wish to. Mr. Merlin Jites is here in that regard. And any other questions, I'd be uh, happy to try to answer. Rick, <clears throat> as is typical with these types of uh, properties if you build a single family residence on there which would meet the 35 acre requirement that the county has um, that's in an aquifer overlay protection zone isn't it do we allow septics out there um, not by strict application of our ordinance no that is correct that would not even a single septic tank would go over our aquifer protection overlay district Rick, also, would you show it on the screen, please? There will be a lot of people who are not acquainted with this location. The red lines are our city limits. I've outlined the development under uh, that we're visiting about Rogatsky edition in the blue. Uh, just, I can zoom in just a little bit or however far you might want to take this in. But it's located um, more or less just west of, of our Derby Downs edition. Right here is Derby Downs and the arena located here. 
Our golf course, of course, is here. And we just spoke of Putters Green, the lots that were rezoned right here. So this is a property, 35 acres, including one half of the, uh, the right of way that exists there. Is the owner aware of the septic tank issue? Of that there will not, I'm, I'm sorry. We, we, we would anticipate that this is going to be constructed with a septic tank. But it's my understanding that their septic tanks are not allowed in that area. Hey, Rick, uh, since Jeff is here, or maybe uh, how close do we have our water lines and uh, sewer system going to that property? I think Herb Bloomquist Bloom could address the sewer system, but our, our, um, our water actually is adjacent to the property. Um, this is one of the few, maybe handful of... Uh, of um, uh, customers in the city that was served by water previous to when we adopted our policy of not um, supplying water outside the city limits. Um, both uh, it's, it's uh, part of the of the two-part turkey farm that uh, Oak Valley Farms used to operate. It's the East Barn, and they've had water since the 30s or 40s. Uh, they actually laid down to the water treatment plant at the lake and hooked it up. So our our um, our interpretation would be that this this particular customer would be grandfathered and and um, could still have water for whatever they develop there. So um, everything else is is served by us. So gas and electric. Uh, from a sanitary sewer perspective, uh, there's a gravity line running down for, along Fourth Avenue South, and I believe there's a a line that services the Putters Green, both of which are. Um, I'm going to guess about a half a mile away. Rick, since this is in the county, uh, does the county have any more regulations that might apply to this property since it's not in city limits? The county is not concerned about the septic tank issue, if that's the question. Basically, when we adopted the new Title 21 <clears throat> ordinance, uh, maybe about two years ago, we took in a very large section around that area, down Pelican and around a lot of Pelican, and in, in essence, outlawed um, by ordinance septics in an extremely large area. Um, and you know that's that's what the issue would be. I mean, and there's it's the, the, most of the area between Compesca and Pelican, and and even down to the south side of Pelican, is within our jurisdiction, our territorial jurisdiction. So we have influence over that. does not appear our tools are cooperating with us yeah, we could, uh, with regard to the um, the overlay talk for overlay protection district that is correct the discussion you began mr. Johnson is absolutely correct <clears throat> in talking about changes to our title 21 and entering into and developing ordinances for a joint jurisdiction that is one of the things that we talked about as being too restrictive and around our lake areas, we have, we are introducing, or we will be introducing a step type program if you're so far and so dense, uh, to, so far from the perimeter of a lake and a, a certain density of development that's going to trigger certain levels of whether or not a septic tank can be used and whether or not uh, collection systems and you know, ver various types of treatment facilities can be used. Uh, but right now, strict application would, would be really tight on this one in terms of putting even one septic tank. 
that is one thing that we were hoping um, Staff felt comfortable in that uh, a given one one basically farmstead on a 35 acre application uh, that the septic tank wasn't an issue even with it being over the shallow aquifer if the uh, owner was to turn around and subdivide and in and, and propose further development then we'd certainly be wanting to have a completely different discussion here what, what about the scenario uh, of them building on the 35 acres now and eventually at 35 acres coming into the city you're not going to allow a septic tank then are you that was the whole idea that uh, if if the city touched them on any any part or if they decided to further subdivide the property then we would we would uh, they would certainly at this point in time through the letter of assurance waive their uh, their right and would voluntarily annex to the city at which point in time we would certainly entertain uh, uh, the idea of sanitary sewer uh, improved in infrastructure in terms of road and and so on is that Gary in yellow the overlay um, the area in yellow is called zone B which is the shallow aquifer the purple or fuchsia pink whatever color that might be that is our wellhead protection area th that portion of the shallow aquifer as well and the hand on there uh, locates the approximate location of the of the development Yeah, I think we need to revisit that because I thought, you know, I brought it up when we passed it, uh, how restrictive that was going to be, and but we moved ahead anyway. But I think I, I, I think that's an awful lot of, of territory to say no septic. So I think there is room for concern. We have dealt with other applications where, um, and in, where the number of and the of building sites would be one per two acres. You know, there's a happy medium in there somewhere, and I think one per two acres, uh, that is too many septic tanks over the shallow aquifer, and I think that's the distinguishing here, the distinguishing uh, factor in this application versus other that we have visited in the past. Plus, there's also a difference in my estimation of sitting on the shore of a lake and wanting to have a septic tank versus sitting, uh, oh, well, you know, here we're talking probably four or five miles away from one of them and at least two from the other. I don't disagree with that, but that's not what our ordinance says. <laughs> okay. Is there any questions then for Rick? Marlon, did you want to speak to any of these issues or no? Okay. Council, I'll need some... <coughs> Well, I'll make a motion to approve the plat. Do we, have we make that a motion yet? No, we haven't had no motion okay. to approve the plat. Uh, approved the uh, plat, uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, motion. Uh, is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mrs. York. Is there any further discussion? If not, then all in favor say aye. aye. <coughs> Opposed? Motion carried. Item number six is planning and zoning fees. Resolution number 5 62. Herb? Thank you, Mayor and member of the, members of the Council. In, in your Council packets are two resolutions, 05-62 and 05-63. Uh, 5-62 uh, deals with the planning and zoning fees, and 5-63 deals with the building permit fees. Uh, late last week, uh, each one of you should, re should have received email, uh, a revised uh, version of both of those resolutions, and there's also a hard copy of those at your desk, neither one of them <coughs> created any major changes from our previous discussions, but I will highlight in in the discussions as we uh, talk about each one of the resolutions what those changes were. <coughs> a little background first. As a result of the uh, budgeting process and as we continue to spend a lot of time as planning and zoning department reviewing the various kinds of uh, administrative actions and building permits that we see on a daily basis, uh, it's become necessary to set up an improved fee structure uh, to recoup some of the costs that we incur on it as a department on a daily basis. Not knowing exactly what sort of structure uh, the this, this city should adopt, the, you know, the city contracted with first district associations of local governments to do a study. And, and, and in that study, what we, we did was uh, had a review of what other municipalities in our region charge for similar types of services that that come out of the planning and zoning department. 
what we found is that over a period of time and in I would guess uh, for part of it it could have been up to at least 20 years the city's fallen well behind the other municipalities in administration of, of the planning and zoning fees uh, after after review of the first district study the staff recommendation was to bring the city uh, of Watertown fee structure in line with the other class one municipalities and I'll refer to those those that are our size as Mitchell Brookings Huron and Aberdeen <clears throat> we we worked on it further as a staff we also visited with the Public Works Committee and Finance Committee and uh, and the drafted resolutions that you have in front of you are the recommendation that uh, that we brought forth uh, as a result of the, the various discussions. Uh, I would also uh, say that uh, during the budget cycle, we spent quite a bit of time talking about it, and the recommendation at that time was to uh, pursue a fee increase to support the uh, 2006 revenue requirements of the Planning and Zoning Department. And to <coughs> given that, the bottom line is that the adoption of administrative fees for planning and zoning requests and the adjustment of building permitting fees is not only way overdue but uh, absolutely necessary the first resolu resolution 5-62 deals with the planning and zoning fees uh, it's important that you understand as a council that a lot of the action the administrative ac actions that uh, we've handled in the past and I'll, I'll reference a few zoning map revisions special exception request variance requests petitions for annexation and petitions for vacation and right away review of preliminary plans reviews of plan unit developments none of those have had charges other than if there was a requirement uh, for uh, a, a publication cost to uh, advertise a hearing in the public opinion also a sign permit for a sign that was uh, 100 square feet or 10 by 10 uh, cost the applicant a dollar uh, for something greater than 100 square feet it cost the applicant two dollars um, there was also no charges for uh, manufactured home permits uh, a, a minimal charge for demolition demolition and excavation permits uh, a minimum charge for uh, moving of homes where there was an old home that was uh, out of date with plumbing codes or, or, or a newer, newer home. So in the process of going through this fee review, we've t tried to take a look at all the different kinds of administrative fees that the, the city uh, could be asked to charge and, 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 and bring them, bring them around and, and try to update them all at one time. <clears throat> the only, the only changes, uh, oh, the other comment I'd make is that, uh, we would propose that uh, these fees become effective January 1st of 2006. The only changes uh, to the schedule that f from the previous discussions that we've had at committee level was to add a fee for calling special meetings for the Board of Adjustment or the Plan Commission and to clarify that city will bill the applicant for actual costs of filing and recording documents with the Register of Deeds. The, the adoption of resolution 5-62 uh, comes with the Public Works Committee and Finance re uh, Committee recommendation for approval. At this time, Rick Slecker and I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Otherwise, uh, we'd request a motion to approve. May I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Walter. A second? Second. Second by Mr. Wilson. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, Herb, I got a question. Uh, you did a little comparison with some of the other cities. Can you give us an idea how we stand there? Uh, I'll talk about building permits when we actually move to the next resolution. But from a planning and zoning perspective, when you're charging nothing, um, it, it, we, we felt quite a ways behind. What you see in, in terms of the proposed charges that that I put in uh, put in front of you in, in resolution 5-62 represents us getting uh, uh, to about halfway or maybe in some cases equal to the other municipalities I'll use variance as an example in in uh, in a couple of the municipalities uh, uh, those municipalities charge two hundred and fifty dollars for a variance we're only proposing here that we would charge a hundred dollars plus a publication fee the uh, special exception, I believe, was was the same. Um, the the uh, the state average for a zoning map uh, revision was two hundred dollars. Uh, the state average was one hundred twenty-five for a special exception. 
uh, preliminary plan review was 200. So what I've tried to do is, is, is bring us in line with the state average or, or just, just short of the state average in making these recommendations. Herb, do you, you have an estimate of how much this would raise over the course of a year based on history? Well, I'll, I'll use this exam uh, this year as as a, as a point of comparison, and, and really the administrative fees. I don't know that you'll see a, a large increase in terms of the amount of revenue the planning and zoning department would collect. But I can tell you from a building permitting um, perspective, had we adopted the recommendations that we're we're going to propose in resolution 5-63, we would have more than doubled the amount of revenue that uh, we we received as a city. Uh, this year, I believe we uh, collected, and I'm, I'm, I'm using figures that were up to date as of our last finance committee meeting, I believe we collected about $68,000 in building permitting fees, whereas if we would have had the fee structure in place, it would have been somewhere around 140 or 145,000. Any other questions for Herb? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number seven is building permit fees, resolution 5-63, and Herb again. Again, uh, uh, this is a discussion of the adoption of resolution 5-63, which establishes a revised schedule of fees for building permits issued for construction in Watertown. Uh, it's important to understand that periodically it is necessary to update fees and I went back and I, I tried to research the last time our building permit permit fees were revised and it appears it was at least 20 year uh, 20 years if not longer um, and in the original council packet was a fee table utilized for discussion and illustrative purposes which hit on uh, just uh, uh, certain certain uh, level or levels of valuation as you entered a table what we've uh, replaced uh, in the email to you earlier in the week and and at your desktops is a, a fee computation table that is intended to more completely establish the build, building permitting fees for the entire range to include uh, those in excess of 500,000 and and also if a fee fell for instance between 170 and 175,000 how would you calculate it well that's what the table that will is in the resolution will in fact do do for you again uh, 5-63 would hereby establish the schedule to be effective January 1st of 2006 for building permits issued on on complete complete applications received by the Pl Watertown Planning and Zoning Department after December 31st of 2005 and I illustrate complete because if somebody comes in with a partial application and, and they haven't provided us all the information we're going to send them back and and not accept their building permit fee so we're, we're trying to get that word out so we don't end up you know with an argument as to well I, I tried to uh, submit my building permit to you and you didn't take it and therefore now my, my fee is going to increase so hopefully with the period of time we're doing it during the holiday season we're not going to be seeing given the fact that we got a foot 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 or foot and a half of snow on the ground and in, in, in the holiday period we won't be seeing many building permits during this period but uh, just for point of clarification that's why we say complete Again, uh, the, the adoption of this resolution comes with a Public Works Committee and Finance uh, Committee recommendations for approval, and, and unless you have questions, I'd certainly entertain a motion to approve Resolution 5-63. Herb, these also hadn't been increased for 20-plus years. Is that correct, these building permit fees? That's, uh, that's what I stated previously. As far as I can recollect, right. uh, the only... The only uh, way of determining any any anything was we had a a piece of paper on on the wall of our 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 previous building official that had yellowed and been there many 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 years uh no date on it uh and as far as we can determine it's been a long time since we incorporated any, any kind of changes and and unfortunately that makes it tough because to get ourselves to a position where I won't say competitive, but in line with other communities, we're going to see 
more than just a little a little jump in, in fees. Had we been making changes periodically over a period of time, it'd be like, just like if you were running a business, uh, uh, you would hopefully make the adjustments uh, in in your your income stream to support your revenue needs, and that's what we're trying to do here. Thank you, Herb. May I have a motion then for number five dash sixty three? So moved. So moved by Mr. Gizelbeck. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Wilson. Is there any further discussion? Oh, just a question, Herb. Have you had any feedback from the Builders Association or anybody like that? We we visited with the, with the home builders. It's been a couple weeks ago, and. And, and, and talked about the idea of an increase. They've been aware of the fact that we've been having discussions about the possibility of increases for over a year, so it certainly wasn't a surprise uh, to them. And uh, while, while they're, they're somewhat concerned, they, they understood that uh, there, there's a need to do it, and uh, I, I, my understanding is they're supportive. I have not had any calls either in regards to it, so... All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 8A, Shane. Excuse me, item number 8 is consideration of bids for purchase or construction of, and number A is the 2006 seal coat AC mat construction and milling. Good evening, Council and Mayor Fox. Uh, in your packets, you should have copies of the bids received for our next year's materials, supplies, and fuel products. I'll quickly run through each of those items and, and kind of give you a comparison as, as to what it was last year. Uh, starting with seal coat, AC mat construction and milling. The seal coat bid was uh, 78.4 cents per square yard and was about a 19% increase over last year. The milling bid was 70 cents per square yard and was about a 4% increase over last year. Tack coat and flush seal went up 17 cents per square yard from 15 cents last year. Furnish and install asphalt mix went up 7% from last year to $39.30 per ton. Adjustment of sewer manholes went up from $250 to $300. All adjustment of gas and water boxes stayed the same as shown. We did not receive any concrete bids. For hot mix asphalt, we received a bid of $41 per ton, which is about a 6% increase over last year. Cold mix had a bid of $70 per ton, which was an increase of 17% over last year. Emulsified asphalt bid was $0.87.9 cents per gallon, and that was about a 3% increase from last year. For the pit run, we had, about, we had $5.45 per ton, and that was an increase of around 17% from last year. Crushed rock stayed the same. Rock chips were $11.25 per ton from $11.15 last year. Pea gravel stayed the same at $6 per ton. De-icing sand went up $0.05 cents from last year to $5.50 per ton. Fill dirt had a $7 per ton and went up $0.25 cents from last year. Black dirt was $10 per ton and went up $1 from last year. Gasoline and diesel fuel saw the biggest increases over last year with an average increase of 23%. Uh, 250 gallons or more of delivered unleaded gasoline is $2.05 per gallon. 250 gallons or more of delivered 10% ethanol blend is $2.07 per gallon. E85 ethanol blend at the supplier's pump was $1.82 per gallon. Premium unleaded at the supplier's pump was $2.18 per gallon. 250 gallons or more of diesel fuel number 1D at supplier's pump was $2.25 per gallon. 250 gallons or more of diesel fuel number 2D at supplier's pump was $2.20 per gallon. Diesel fuel 50-50 blend at supplier's pump is $2.225 per gallon. Biodiesel blend at supplier's pump was $2.23 per gallon. Salt and calcium chloride rock salt saw a 12% increase at $42.45 per ton. Calcium chloride was $425 per ton with an 11% increase from last year. Cutting edges, <clears throat> the prices for cutting edges are shown with no bidders from last year. Manhole frames and covers saw an average of 6% increase over last year. Joint sealant, item number one, six, was $680 per ton and alternate, alternate to number item one was $720 per ton. These were about 7% increases over last year. Culvert pipe, sanitary sewer pipe, and manhole bases. I won't go through each of those items as we saw an increase of 5 to 
increase over last year's prices. And I believe that was it. We would recommend the council to approve these bid results. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and that comes with public works approval. So, Shane, you've just said uh, both A and B then? Yeah, yep, okay. I lumped those together, yep. Okay. Tracy, is that okay to do those together? It is? Okay. If I may have a motion, please. So I'll move by Mr. Meisenheimer. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Gizelbeck. Is there any questions to Shane then on these uh, quotes? Shane, any idea why we never get anybody to bid on our concrete? Seems uh, like it's been several years. Yeah, it's been several years. I don't know why that is. I don't know why we, unless Dave. I guess what I've been hearing is that uh, since we aren't bidding any specific projects and they, they don't know exactly what the projects are going to be, they, they're reluctant to give us prices on, on the concrete work. If, if we had a, a, a project there that they knew they were going to, to get uh, and, and they could bid it accordingly, they, they probably would give us some prices. Any other questions? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number C is the street lighting project at Mallard Point Business Park, 29th Street Southeast. Dave? Good evening. Uh, bids were opened on November 1st for a uh, street lighting project along 29th Street uh, East uh, in the Walmart area. Uh, we received two bids with the low bidder being uh, Ingolstadt Electric for $65,800. Uh, this uh, project was was bid by the the city uh, because uh, the city had some uh, uh, commitments to to Walmart as part of the agreement with Walmart that the lights would be be put in there and Walmart uh, uh, is contributing some toward the the uh, purchase of those lights and installation of the lights uh, the remainder of of this project is is being paid for by municipal utilities uh, this was before the, the Public Works Committee, uh, and they recommended approval. Uh, I believe the, the Municipal Utilities also has uh, recommended approval of this. So may I have a motion then for this street lighting project? Let me make that motion. Motion by Mr. Heller. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Mrs. Arbogast. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Thank you, Dave. Number D of eight, the sanitary sewer project, Andrews Industrial Park. Shane? Yeah, we received two bids uh, for this, for the Andrews Industrial Park sanitary sewer project. The, uh, the low bidder was Gene Day Excavating, $45,192.64. And as you can see, that was pretty close to the engineer's estimate of $44,172. And we would look for a motion to approve this bid, and this comes with public works approval. May I have a motion for the approval? So moved by Mr. Solberg, seconded. Second. Second by Mr. Johnson. Is there any further discussions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Shane. Item number nine on the agenda is the ambulance rate increase. And uh, Pat Smith, will you be addressing that, or will Mike? questions Mike's gone he's out of town to a school actually what it, uh, like the gentleman was talking earlier there's been an extreme increase in the cost of fuel we're hoping that this dollar increase will help offset that a little bit on our ambulances so it's a dollar per mile increase dollar per mile increase yes okay Tracy I would just also point out that when the Finance Committee discussed the ambulance rates again this fall um, there, there was quite a bit of discussion about the base rates as well. There are changes in the way that Medicare uh, will be reimbursing or allowing charges to be uh, reimbursed through their program. And uh, currently there are certain services or supplies that the city provides uh, to uh, uh, patients on the ambulance that we, we receive reimbursement from Medicare on that after the first of the year Medicare will no longer be reimbursing. However, we don't know what kind of an adjustment uh, at this point uh, just uh, will be made in the Medicare reimbursements for the base rate. So presumably because they won't be paying for certain things, certain additional charges, 
their, their allowable costs on the base rate will be increasing, but at this stage we don't, uh, don't know just how much. So it's very possible uh, once that information is known that uh, the council may, may be considering a, a change in the base rate charges as well. But at this point it was just, uh, uh, the, at least according to the Finance Committee, they felt it was appropriate just to address the, the mileage charge at this point. Thank you, Tracy. May I have a motion then, either approve or disapprove for the dollar increase? Motion, motion by Mr. Wilson, the second. I'll second it. Seconded by Mrs. York. Is there any further questions or discussion? If not, all in favor say uh, aye. Just a moment, oh, excuse me. Uh, we understand that there is uh, going to be proposed a, a major study on, on the fire department which I assume will include the ambulance services, et cetera. And in light of that, till we find out where we're going with that, um, <clears throat> I would like to uh, table this rate increase for the time being until we find out more about this study that's going to be, apparently going to be proposed. Okay, uh, Stan, I'm, did we have a motion and a second, did we, on that? What do we need to do then? Vote on that, or do we vote to the table? I, I think that Mr. Garnis has offered a substitute motion to table, and, a, and I think that the mayor ought to next call for a second to see if there is one. Okay, is there a second for that? Second. Seconded by Mr. Gizelbeck. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Wait, 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 wait. Excuse wait. me? Um, you can discuss the tabling motion, right? Yeah. No. No, we should. No. no. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Roll call, please. Okay, on the motion to table, uh, Mrs. Arbogast? Yes. Garnos? Yes. Gisselbeck? Aye. Heller? Yes. Johnson? No. Meisenheimer? No. Solberg? Yes. Walder? Yes. Wilson? No. And York? Yes. Count seven votes in favor, three opposed. Motion is tabled. Excuse me, motion to the table has been approved. We have a follow up discussion? <laughs> <laughs> well, my whole. Uh, the, the preliminary. Not, that's not according to parliamentary procedure, Mr. Johnson. Stan, would you rule on that? Are we. Uh... <coughs> the, he, I, I do believe that technically Mr. Johnson would be out of order. It's certainly up to the chair if he wants to allow just a. Uh, Form of privilege or a courtesy to him, but he certainly technically would be out of order. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to item number 10, which is consideration of change order number one to the contract with Hawkeye Enterprises Incorporated for the North Park Sanitary Sewer Project for $5,950.07. And Dave? Uh, you have before you the, the change order, uh, as the mayor said, for the North Park Sanitary Sewer Project. Uh, this project is, is complete except for some uh, backfilling behind some curbs. Uh, the, the major change to this project is, is uh, in the amount of asphalt that was needed for, for street repair. Uh, there was uh, considerable extra excavation that was needed to, to locate uh, many of the, the sewer services on this project because they couldn't be traced and, and it wasn't couldn't we be determined exactly where they were? Uh, so that's the major portion of the of the change. The rest of the changes are, are basically adjustment of uh, quantities for uh, work actually completed. Uh, this was before the Public Works Committee and comes to you with their recommendation for approval. Thank you, Dave. May I have a motion then to approve the change so order? Moved. So moved by Mr. Heller. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mrs. Arbogast. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Dave. Item number 11 is a consideration of a business license application for a gas fitter license from Adam Whiting for a $25 fee. Is so moved by Mr. Solberg. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Gizelbeck. Is there any questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number 12 is the uh, authorization for the finance officer 
to disperse payment for 2006 workers' compensation insurance premium. Tracy? Thank you, and uh, this is something we do each year at this time. Our, our workers' comp policy renews January 1st. Uh, we now have the breakdown of the premium renewal for uh, 2006. I did put a copy of that on your desk tonight. The total premium that will be due from the city is $155,865. Uh, in addition to that, the municipal utilities will be paying $30,049 for a total of $185,914. And so that we can uh, be sure to continue our coverage uh, without any lapse, I would ask for your authorization to pay that premium uh, shortly after the first of the year, at uh, first business day of, of next year. May I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Walter. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Meisenheimer. Is there any questions to Tracy in regards to that? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next is item number 13 is a motion to approve the bills and payroll and authorize payment. I should so moved. So moved by Mr. Gizelbeck and seconded by Mr. Heller. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We won't let anyone discuss those. <laughs> item number 14 is the open and you have a sheet on your table that uh, we have two items to address on the open the first item is the approval of a contract with Austin Engineering Company for professional services related to the First Avenue North Extension project Herb thank you uh, I'll briefly review the uh, con consultant selection process for uh, First Avenue North Extension project uh, staff prepared and distributed a three-page request for proposals which included a project description and a minimum submittal requirements. Those uh, RFPs were emailed to seven local and regional firms on or about October 14th. Uh, we emailed to firms that had uh, previously dealt uh, with, with similar kinds of projects with the city and uh, to firms that uh, the, the city had worked with previously. Uh, the city received back four proposals uh, by the November 4th de uh, deadline date from Austin Engineering, Clark Engineering, Helms & Associates, and Old Tag Engineering. A selection committee uh, comprised of uh, city council members uh, Brad Johnson, Carol Arbogast, and Larry Wilson, plus uh, Dave Peterson and myself reviewed the f four proposals uh, November 15th through 17th. and. Uh, we all felt that uh, we knew the firms well enough to be able to move forward without doing on-site interviews. Um, the uh, process identified Austin Engineering as a preferred firm that most adequately met the needs of the project. Uh, Austin brings expertise to Watertown uh, from the, their Watertown office and has also worked on previous projects and similar road design projects, uh, not only in Watertown but around other South Dakota municipalities. On November 22nd, uh, staff received the Public Works uh, Committee concurrence to move forward with Austin to uh, finalize the scope of work and uh, to establish a not to exceed uh, fee, which we've done. Uh, I'm, I'm now here to request authorization for the mayor and finance officer to enter into a contract with Austin Engineering to conduct survey design plans and construction management for the First Avenue North Extension uh, pro uh, Street and Sanitary Sewer Project with a maximum limiting fee of $258,710. And, and we'd ask for your approval contingent upon um, uh, final uh, department, South Dakota Department of Transportation approval for, for the agreement since they'll be, uh, this is an urban systems par uh, project, they will be a party to uh, the final agreement and it has been submitted to them for their review. We don't see any issues, but uh, we just ask for that as a contingent on your approval. Thank you, Herb. <clears throat> May I have a motion then for the approval? Please to make that motion. Motion by Mr. Wilson. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Solberg. Is there any questions to Herb in the, on the contract? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Herb. Item number two on the open is the authorization for the mayor to sign a contract with New World Systems for purchase of police department records management software. Chief VTEC. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we've been running around at the police department with our, like chickens with our head cut off the last two weeks since you met. 
we budgeted for a new records management system and and we were authorized about sixty thousand dollars and about two weeks ago jim sutton the director of the emergency management system uh, he received notification from uh, peer that we were authorized uh, some money to the tune of about ninety four thousand dollars in grant money uh, to partner with the Coddington County Sheriff's Office to share in a new records management system. In addition to that, Sheriff Olson applied for a grant to the tune of about $84,000, and he received notification just last week that we were approved of, uh, of that as well. So that brings our balance down to about 11 grand. And the sheriff is approaching the county commissioners, and that brings his balance down to about 11 grand too. So I'm here tonight to ask you uh, to authorize the mayor to sign a contract. Tracy's looked it over and Stanton's looked it over and it looks pretty good and we're real excited about it. May I have a motion please? So moved, so moved by Mr. Solberg, is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Mrs. York. Is Thank you a lot. Any questions? Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks a bunch. And I'll be signing that contract tonight, Chief Etec. Before they change their mind, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Item number 15 is uh, old business. Is there any old business to come before us? If not, we'll go to item number 16, which is new business. I, I don't really have any new business, Mayor, but I'd just like to make a comment and, and uh, uh, let uh, the uh, different departments know how appreciative everybody in the city is. The utility department did a marvelous job I think uh, keeping everybody or most everybody on online during the storm and to Mike Rye and his department uh, for doing a marvelous job getting the streets uh, cleaned and, and sand down and and uh, I, I think we uh, owe him a uh, debt uh, of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you Alderman Heller. That's very nice to hear that. I'm sure they appreciate that. We'll move on to item number 17 then. Any liaison member reports? We will be having to go to number 18 executive session and so we'll be discussing some personnel matters and um, after we come out of the executive session I don't expect any uh, action we'll be taking. So I'd like to have a motion to go into executive session. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Arbogast and seconded by Mr. Meisenheimer. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.